فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى we going to discuss matters pertaining to ash-shita we going to have ان شاء الله تعالى وقفات points that we're going to cover regarding winter as you all know we're in the the winter season cold and the religion of al-islam is a religion that is holistic it deals with all of our affairs our private affairs our public affairs and what it also does is it if the temperature changes the weather changes islam has rulings pertaining to that that's why the scholars they say that islam is salihatun li kulli zaman wa makan that islam is befitting for every time and every place Islam it perfects every context and every situation that a person may be in Islam is there to change it into uh, into the better So inshallah ta'ala we're going to have waqafat la'alla Allah azza wa jalla yaftah al qulub We hope from this Allah opens hearts of the people uh, into these matters The first one is the first point is ta'ammul wa tafakkur We need to ponder and we need to analyze the reality around us One of the greatest thing a person can spend their time in doing is to ponder in the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether those signs are his legislational signs, his ayat which are shar'iyah, the ayat meaning the Qur'an, that the person ponders over it as Allah says in the Qur'an, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمَ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقَفَالُهَا Do they not ponder on the Qur'an or are there locks on their hearts? So pondering over the verses, the Qur'an. and standing over it these are the ayat which are shar'iyah the legislational verses the legislational signs and then we have the second one which is the ayat which is kawniyah the universal signs pondering over it and looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the amazing thing he's, he has created and he's brought about and then once you look at that and you ponder over it you then connect your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you see how majestic and how great he is subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> Allah says in the Quran inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard verily there is in the samawat and there is in the ard wa ikhtilaf al layl wal nahar and there's also in the the changing of the night to the day and the day changing to the night la ayat there are signs in that But for who takes that as a sign? لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ The wise people, the smart intellectual individuals are the ones who take this as a sign. الَّذِينَ are the ones يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا They remember Allah when they are standing in prayer. وَقُعُودًا When they are sitting, they remember Him and they exalt Him. وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ They also even remember Allah when they are lying on their sides. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ And they think. They spend their time thinking and analyzing and pondering. في خلق السماوات in the creation of Allah ربنا my Lord ما خلقت هذا باطلا you have not created this without no aim and no purpose you created this all for a reason سبحانك exalted you are our Allah فقينا save us and protect us from what عذاب النار Allah is praising these people and one of the things that Allah is praising them for is what they have sat down ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارَ So pondering over the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first thing that we need to analyze, realize the seriousness of it. So that's our first point that we were التأمل والتفكر Pondering and analyzing and contemplating. The second point that we're going to stand on is from the universal signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought is winter. Winter is shita. Winter is from the universal signs. Allah speaks about them in many places in the Quran. 
The first one, Allah wa Taala, He talks about it as a sawaiq. Sawaiq is a thunderbolt. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He says in the Quran, wa yursilu sawaiqa, and He, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He sends the thunderbolt. فَيُصِيبُ بِهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ And with it, Allah strikes subhanahu wa ta'ala whom he wills. وَهُمْ And they, the disbelievers. يُجَادِلُونَ فِي اللَّهِ They dispute about Allah. وَهُوَ أَنَّ Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is شَدِيدُ mihal. Allah is mighty in strength and severe in punishment. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ayah has a sabab of nuzul. It has a purpose in why it came down. There's a story behind it. The story of it is that a man from Min Udama al Jahiliya, from the highly respected chiefs of Jahiliya, he disputed in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He disputed. This man argued in the affairs of Allah by saying to the Prophet of Allah, he said to him, who's your Lord, Muhammad? Which you call me to. Is he Allah? Is he from metal? Is he Allah that you call me to? Is he, out, is he made out of fiddah? Is he made out of silver? Is he created from gold? And then the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent on a sawa'iq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent a thunderbolt. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he stroked him and he killed him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he burnt him alive, this individual. And Imam al-Tabara, Ibn Jalil al-Tabari brings in his, this in his tafsir and bazaar in his musnad. So these are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah uses. They are from the armies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second uh, sign of shita. The first one I mentioned was sawa'iq, thunderbolt. The second one is ar-ra'd wal-barq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has lightning. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, as the narration mentions in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, al-Nasai and al-Bani authenticated it. Aqbalat yahud ila al-Nabi. The Jews, they came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and they said to him, Ya Abul Qasim, O Abu Qasim, akhbirna an al-ra'di. Tell us about the about the thunder. Tell us about it. Ma huwa, what is it? Tell us about, about the thunder. What is it? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Qala malakum min al-malaika. It's an angel from the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mukalun bis sahab. His responsibility is regarding, it's regarding the clouds. He is burdened, He's responsible for the clouds. This angel, his responsibility is the cloud. Ma'ahu makhariqun. And with him, he has is a piece of fire. Min narin. Yasuqu bihi sahab, which he moves the cloud with. Just like a shepherd, he moves the what? He moves his, yeah, his herd of sheep. This angel is moving the cloud with it. Haythu sha'a, wherever he wills. Qalu, they said, فَمَا هَذَا الصَّوْتُ الَّذِي نَسْمَعُ Then what's this sound in which we hear of Muhammad? What is this noise that we hear? He said to them, alayhi salatu wasalam, رَجْزُهُ بِالسَّحَابِ إِذَا زَجَرَهُ حَتَّى يَنْتَهِ إِلَى حَيْثُ أُمِرُ The noise in which you hear, it is him striking the clouds when he drives them on until they go to where they were commanded to go to. Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi narrated this and and Nasa'i and Shaykh Nasir rahimahullah authenticated it. Then, al-ra'd wal-barq, the thunder, is from the what? It's from the ayat of Allah's kawniyah. The third signs of the shita, winter, is what? Al-matar wal-barad, rain and cold. The cold that we see and the rain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in surah al-nur, I think it's ayah 43, Allah says, Alam tara anna Allah, do you not see O Muhammad? Anna Allah used ji that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he drives sahab and clouds. Thumma yu'alifu baynahu, and then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he brings it together. 
ثم يجعله ركاما and then Allah تبارك وتعالى he collects them together as a mass he brings it as a mass فترى الودق then you see the rain يخرج من خلاله the clouds Allah brings it together they all come together and through that what does Allah bring he brings the rain from it سبحانه وتعالى من خلاله from within those clouds وينزل من السماء then Allah تبارك وتعالى from the sky comes down من جبال فيها من برد then comes from that cloud that which Allah brings down mountains of hail فيصيبوا بها Allah تبارك وتعالى he gives that that hailstone and brings it down and strikes onto whoever he wills ويصرفه and he diverts it and averts it and من يشاء whoever he wills يكاد سنا برقه this lightning that you see of Muhammad it is close it is able يذهب بالأبصار to take away the eyesight. How powerful all of these are what? These are all ayat which are pertaining to the winter. The third waqfa, the third waqfa, the third point that we're going to analyze and look at inshaAllah ta'ala and we're going to think about and ponder and contemplate is shakwa, a complaint that has come. Abu Huraira narrated and the hadith is found in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said ishtakati naru the hellfire complained ila rabbiha it complained to its lord faqalat it said ya rabbi my lord akala ba'di ba'da i have eaten myself part of me has eaten the other part fa'adina laha bi nafasayni allah permitted for the hellfire two times for it to breathe nafasin fi shitai one time it breathes and this is winter وَنَفَسٍ فِي الصَّيْفِ And the other breathing is in summer. فَهُوَ أَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ مِنَ الْحَرِّ The heat that you find at summer is the Jahannam breathing. وَأَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ And the cold which you find in winter is from Zamharir. Zamharir, breathing, which is a hellfire. So my beloved brothers and sisters, Winter and summer are two times where you really need to remember the hellfire. And it is sad that shaitan fools us in summer, makes our sisters take off their hijab. It makes our men dress in the way that they dress instead of realizing that the hellfire, that the hellfire is more hot than this. So when you go to countries which reach the temperature 50 degrees Celsius, 60, 70, some of them, you really wouldn't remember the hellfire. And when you see this cold, especially countries like Canada and America and other places in the world that I've been to, I've seen, is that it is extremely cold. It goes minus 40. Minus 40. And this is, as the Prophet told us, it is a nafas. Hellfire is what? It is breathing. وَلِذَلِكَ The Salaf who had Ummah, the pious predecessors, the, 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 the rain and the, the, the snow and all of this, it never went without it being connected to the hereafter. وَلِذَلِكَ The Salaf, they used to say, مَا رَأَيْتُ الثَّلْجَ I never saw snow. I never saw snow. يَتَسَاقَطُ Coming down. إِلَّا تَذَكَّرْتُ تَطَايُرَ الصُّحُفِ Except that I remembered the scrolls of the day of judgment the day of resurrection and the day of accountability I remember the when the scrolls would be, un, un, would be opened and people are going to be accounted for their righteous deeds those who have done good are going to be told about their good and those who have done wrong are going to be told about their wrong and then the ayatul kuniya the universal science for them was connected to the what? it connected them to the hereafter Another, inshaAllah ta'ala, fourth point that I want to stand over, inshaAllah ta'ala, pertaining to winter is the issue of a tawheed in shita. Tawheed in winter. These days that we're in right now, winter, a lot of the people, what they do is they attribute the weather and the raining and the cold to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that the Sharia prohibited. To attribute the rain to what? To a lunar, a lunar mansion, a station, eclipse. You say this is what? It's this lunar mansion why, we're, why it's raining. 
and not that Allah wa Taala is the one who sends the rain down. Or for example, if somebody says that this cloud is going to bring rain, attributing the rain to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars, they categorize the attribution of the rain to other than Allah to three categories. They categorize it into three. The first one is nisbah to ijad, that you actually believe that this lunar mansion, or you believe these clouds, you actually believe it independently, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it brings it down, then this without a shadow of a doubt, it is shirk akbar, mukhrijun min al millah, it will take the person out of the fold of Islam. The second one is nisbah to sababin. Nisbah to sababin means that you believe, you believe that the, the lunar mansion is a means and with belief that Allah wa ta'ala is the creator of these actions. This is shirk asgar. This is what? It's shirk asgar. Because everything, Allah has not made it a means Allah did not make the lunar mansion a means. He didn't. Where did he say that? For you to then come and make it a means, it falls under shirk asrar. And it's like the ta'weez. The ta'weez, it's shirk akbar. If you believe that the ta'weez in and within itself, it what? It can be you call, kill. Independent from Allah, it's shirk akbar. And if you believe Allah is the one who brings the cure, but he brings you the cure through the ta'weez, then this becomes shirk asrar. Because you've made this a means when there is no shar'i evidences for that. For who is shirk al asrar. The second, third one is, it's called nisbat waqtin. It's called nisbat waqtin. It's attribution of timing. And this is permissible. And it's the one when the person says, mutirna bi naw'i kada, he means this rain came to us. It has come to us. If he had a note from this, from this lunar mansion, meaning the timing, it is timing, it has come to us. It has nothing to do it producing it, it has nothing to do but the timing that this lunar came here, it came. This timing it came. It's not what brings it. It has no affiliation with its coming. Well, the scholars, they say that the person should not use the word mutirna bi naw'i kada. Rather, he should say, if he wants to say it, mutirna fi naw'i kada. Because that makes it clear that it's talking about the timing. But what's even better than all of that is that the person speaks what the Prophet speak, spoke. That the Prophet said, mutirna, rain came to us bi fadlillahi wa rahmati. It came to us through Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's virtue and his grace. And Allah's mercy is why this rain came down on us. And Imam Malik narrated this in his Muwatta and Ahmad in his Musnad. And Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he narrated this is in his Musnad. Walidalika, some people, they even insult the rain unintentionally. And you know what they say? They say, oh, the weather is bad today. We have a bad weather today. And you should not insult the weather because the, the weather is from the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one should not insult Allah wa Taala's actions, Subhanahu wa Taala. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that Allah said, "La tasubu dahra." Do not insult the dahr, the time. Do not insult the weather and the temperature. If you want to say something about the rain, say a heavy load of rain has come down on us. We are soaking wet. But to say that the weather is bad, this is what it's incorrect. The fifth point that we want to stand over, inshallah ta'ala, is winter and the person's lifespan. Last year, this time, there were brothers, brothers of ours and sisters of ours who were with us, who saw winter. And we now have those same brothers and sisters are no longer with us. Those same brothers and sisters are no longer, they are no longer with us. Winter is a time Seasons, summer, winter, autumn, Allah made them so you realize that you're transiting from one season to another. You know your life is moving on. But if the weather was one, we would think that we're still at the same point. Seasons are times for you to realize that your life is moving on. Walidalika the Salaf, they used to say that the days are three. The days are three. 
a day قد مضى أمس بما فيه أي yes yesterday it took everything with it and everything that went with it وغد أي tomorrow أمل لعلك تدركه it's hope that you might reach it there's that desire and there's that hope that you might reach it and the third one is the third one is a day إنك إن كنت من أهل غد غد فإن غد يجيء برزقه ودون غد يوم وليلة تخرم فيهما أنفاس كثيرة فاجعل همك يومك الذي تعيشه Look at the day you're in Make your desire the day that you're in Yesterday has gone with everything that was in it It took its provision It took the individuals it wanted to take Those who died yesterday died Those who wanted to eat and what there was written for they took it Yesterday went with everything Today is what you have. Tomorrow is a hope. It's a temenni. It's wishful thinking. What you really have is today that you're in. Make your whole desires today. Don't place in your heart years and decades. Don't look for that. Keep in your heart that day that you're in. The poet, he said, مَضَى الدَّهْرُ وَالْأَيَّامُ وَالذَّنْبُ حَاصِلُ Time has gone by it. Seasons has gone by, the days have gone by, the nights have gone by, when them will and the sins are present. And death has come to you, and your heart is heedless. Your blessings that you're attaining in this world is actually deception and it's lost for you. And your life in this world. Is definitely going to perish and it's going to go. It's not going to last forever. When he died, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made on our bodies changing, wrinkles. All of these are signs to be told that your time is coming to an end. That's why Allah said in the Quran, أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرُ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Allah says, have we not given you enough life have we not given you a good duration for you to live, to know and come to your senses? You have 20 years to come back. You have 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever years that Allah has given you for you to come back to your senses. And then Allah says, on top of that, وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ The warner came to you. Abdullah ibn Abbas said that the warner here is the white hair in the bed. He said, that's a warner. When your hair starts to become white, some people, the people, they say to themselves, I'm still young. This is... Um, it's not real, uh, it's just, subhanAllah, it's a bit of stress here or there, but it's not because of my age. No, it's, it is, it really is. You're old. When a five-year-old kid sees you, what does he refer to? He refers to his uncle. He calls you auntie. You're old. You just don't want to accept it. The point that we're going to move on to now, the sixth, sixth waqfa is Al-Jasadul Wahid. We're going to go into Al-Jasadul Wahid. The Prophet told, told us in the hadith that the believers are like one body. We're like one building. We strengthen one another. In another hadith, the Prophet said, That the believers are what? They are like one body to each other. If one part of your body is afflicted with pain and calamity, you don't sleep at night. If your finger is hurting you, that whole night you don't go to sleep. You stay awake. The believers are like that. In winter, we need to remember there are brothers of us and our sisters of us around the world who are freezing today, who have nothing to wear. They don't have the right clothing for it. They're freezing. By Allah, I ask you all, كَمْ يَمْلِكُ أَحَدُنَا مِنْ ثَوْبِ how much clothing do we have in our closet when we wake up and we pick from and we choose from and then we check, take which, which color we want to take we choose it matching with this and that how much has Allah blessed us subhanahu wa ta'ala with his blessings that we have the chance, chance and the choice of choosing look at what's taking place in Surya it's winter, it's cold look at what's taking place so our brothers in the Rohingya camps still freezing, cold, clothing, if nothing. A mother, father, 
and a granddad and a grandma all are sleeping under one duvet in Rohingya today because they have no other they have no other duvet to go under you have your bed you've even got a spare bed in your house that sometimes halfway when you're sleeping when that bed gets hot you, and you feel like you want to jump into the other one you go into it you, you have a big bed you can lie down in you have clothing you have socks that you wear and etc there are people around the world who don't have any of that so ilallah al mushtaka to the claim com complain is allah fala tahqiranna saghiratan don't be little or righteous deed today inna al jibala min al hasa the mountains are from pebbles a penny might change the life of those individuals so tasaddaq give charity remember them and give what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you subhanahu wa ta'ala al waqfatu as sabi'ah the seventh point to stand over is ahkam al tahara ahkam in winter ahkam tahara in what in winter the first point of the ahkam al tahara number one is the water that comes down the rain that comes down is pure and it also does purify you yarfa'u al hadatha it removes the what what does it remove it removes your impurity okay and it will also even do what wa yuzil al khabatha and it will also get rid of any filth on your clothing allah says in the quran wa anzalna min as samaa'i ma'an tahura we have sent down from high above water that is pure then point number 2 regarding tahara and winter point number 2 is because it's winter because it's winter many people are not doing wudu correctly because it's cold and the person's woken up and it's fajr many people forget isbaq al wudu making sure that the water reaches every part of their body because it's cold they don't do that and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us that there's a, is a kafara to al-dhunub wal khataya that the person's expiation their sins and their shortcomings are taken from them when they do with what with what isbaq al wudu fi al makari making sure the reach body water reaches your body parts when you dislike it the times when it's the hardest on you and you all know that there's a curse there's the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith wailu lil aqab min al nar hell fire be for the hills that don't reach the water to their their hills so make sure that the water reaches the wudu it reaches everywhere point number 3 regarding tahara and shita is <coughs> number three when it rains and it's winter what happens sometimes is that the water it spot it sprinkles on the ground and then it comes back on your clothing if you're wearing a white thobe you'll always see it black stain goes on your clothing or even people who are driving who are not sensible in their driving they will splash the water they will splash the water on you and so people tend to get wet more than off more than often in this situation what you need to realize is that this is pure unless you have something that diverts it from its purity al asl fi al ma'i at tahara the asl is that the water is what it is pure al jama'atu min at tabi'in a group amount of tabi'in they were what their water used to cover to their body a group of the sahabas and the tabi'in water used to cover them and they would go into the masjid and still pray rahimahumullah wa radiya anhum point number 4 many of us due to it being cold and it being winter we wear socks and some of us wear leather socks some wear some wear jawarib and others wear the khifaf some wear khufayn socks a lot of us wear and some of us wear what we wear leather socks and from the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on these slaves is that is permitted for you to do al masah you can wipe over all of those whether it be leather socks or whether it be other socks that you are allowed to wipe over it with the condition that that socks is above your ankles if the socks is those sports socks that people wear 
and it's below your ankles, then you're not allowed to do a mash on it. The Prophet told us, if you're a resident, you're in a place where you reside, then it's a yawmun wa layla, a day and a night you can wipe over, okay, which is 24 hours. The traveler, on the other hand, he is permitted three days and three nights he's permitted. So that is 72 hours that he's allowed. When does it start from? It starts from the the first time that he wipes over. According to the strongest opinion. Point number five. Some of the mistakes that people fall into with spirits, with two, with two, point number five for what? Tahara and Shita, which is Mukhalafat al Tahara fi Shita. Some mistakes that people fall into in regards to Tahara in Shita. The first one I did already mention it, which is not making the water reach your body parts correctly, whether it be wudu or whether it even be ghusl from Janaba, major. Major or minor, major impurity, major impurity. The person having a shower, they make sure that the water reaches all the parts of the body. Good. Another mistake that people have, ha, they do is mukhalafat um, that happen is some people they. They allow the salah to go because the water is not hot. The water is what? It's not hot. So they forgot to put on the hot water. And so when they wake up for fajr, the water is cold. And they fear that they may, they may cause themselves health issues because of the excessive coldness of the water. Then you are not allowed to say, oh, I'm waiting for the water to be hot. And then fajr goes out like that. What you have is two options. You either do what? A tayammum. Uh, or you use the cold water if you really don't fear it and it's not going to cause you any harm. These are the mistakes that many people fall into. Point number eight that we're going to stand over. The eighth point that we're going to stand over, which is ahkamu salah, the salah in winter. Point number one, al jam'u, combining between the prayers. But combining between Dhuhr al Asr and combining between Salatay al Maghrib wal Isha, combining between Dhuhr and what? Asr. And Maghrib and Isha. Are we all together? These prayers are permissible for you to combine between. Especially at the time in winter like this where it rains. And when it excessively rains, the masjid should teach the people the Sunnah. Of combining between the salahs but many people they go wrong by believing if it's a very windy day if it's a very windy day that what if it's a windy day that you're allowed to combine the prayer this is incorrect hey at kibadu ulama they gave a fatwa that if it's a windy day there's no evidence for the combining of the prayer because the companions, Medina, it used to be rainy, it used to be uh, sandy sometimes. And sometimes the narration mentioned that even the clouds would be red. But there was no mentioning of the combining of the prayer. But we have evidences for rain. Snow takes the ruling of the rain. It's permissible for them too. And the issues pertaining to al jamma the hakam pertaining to combining between the salahs, you can find them in the Qutub al-Fiqh. Some mistakes that people fall into, that was point number one that I mentioned, which is combining between the prayer. Point number two that I'm going to mention regarding the prayer is some mistakes that people fall into when they're in the prayer. And I saw that it's very common. It's the issue, issue of atalathum. Because it's cold, people come with scarves. And so they, co they cover their mouth. And you're not allowed to, a person to, connect, to tie their mouth and cover it. A person is not allowed to cover his mouth whilst he's in the prayer. He's not allowed to. The Prophet ﷺ, he prohibited that. So when you enter the masjid, once you enter the masjid, male or female, what do you do? You what? You take off your scarf. Or if you want, you put your scarf down. If you yawn 
and a tata'ub, which is yawning. You're allowed to take the scarf, put it on your mouth, and then you take it down again. But to have it on your mouth whilst you're in the prayer, it is impermissible and it is not allowed. And it's much better to use your hand instead of putting the scarf on your mouth. Point number two. Sorry, sorry, uh, I, I am speaking about the mistakes that happen in the, in the Salah. So I mentioned A, B. The second mistake that happens is that some people, they pray towards fire. They have a fire, spots, and especially when I was in Birmingham, I remember that people would pray towards that fire because they want to, they want it to be what? They want it to be... Some people even pray towards the... They would also pray towards the radiator. This is something a person should try to avoid and try to leave it. The reason is because it can come under as tashabbuhi bil majusi, imitating the majus who worship fire. And it's something a person, even that the musalli la yaqsudu dhalika, he doesn't intend that. Like yanbaghi lahu, it is required and it's better tajannubu dhalika, that he abstains from that saddal li kulli tariqin yu'addi li shirk. Stay away from every path that might lead to shirk. And the mushabahati al mushrikeen and imitating the disbelievers. The third mistake that people do when it comes to the issue of praying is a lot of the people they come out of their cars. When it comes to praying the prayers, when you're in your car, the Sharia had actually permitted for you to pray in your car. The salah. Especially if it's winter and it's cold and it's rainy, you're even allowed to pray the salawatul khams. If you're on your riding beast, you're allowed to pray on your riding beast. Khashyat al if there's fear of harm in there. Or if you fear that the time might go, especially a sister in her hijab on the motorway. Salah has come in, Dhuhr has come in, and then it's going to, or Asr or Maghrib Isha has come in. And if she pulls over, all it takes is for somebody who hates her to place acid on her face or to drag her on the ground. And she should pray in her, she should pray in the car, even if it's the prayer. ولذلك ابن قدامة رحمه الله he mentions in his كتاب المغني أنه إذا تضرر في السجود if the person has for example it's raining it's it's a puddle it's wet it's wet you can't خاف من التلوث يديه you fear that your hands might be wet or your clothing because of the wet that's on the ground وثيابه بالطين والبلل فله الصلاة على دابته ويؤمي بالسجود ويؤمي بالسجود that he prays on his riding beast and he he moves his head forward for his sujood. Point number nine that we're going to stand over is a dua if shita, supplication in winter. When you see the wind and it's a very it's very windy, there's a dua to make as the Muslim narrated that you say Allahumma inni as'aluka wa Allah I ask you khayraha the good that it comes with, wa khayra ma ursilat bihi and the good that it has been sent with. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ أَوَ اللَّهَ I seek refuge in you مِنْ شَرِّ هَا the evil in it وَشَرِّ مَا أُرْسِلَتْ بِهَا the evil which it was sent for Pay attention, instead of cursing the weather, make this dua Instead of speaking against the weather and speaking bad up against the, uh, the windy day and saying, oh, it's taking my hijab, the stupid weather instead, instead of saying that, what you do is you make this dua Number two, when you see the clouds When you see the clouds you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharriha. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from its evil. Abu Dawud narrated it. When you see the rain coming down, you say, Allahumma sayyiban hani'a. Oh Allahumma sayyiban nafi'an. Oh Allah, a beneficial pouring. It is also recommended for the person to increase in this dua when the rain is also coming down. Because as you know, the times when the dua is accepted, as Al-Albani authenticated it in his Silsila Hadith Sahih, Hadith 1469, that the Prophet said, Look for the acceptance of dua in the Tiqai Jushi, when the enemies meet, when the iqam of the prayer, is the, the adhan of the prayer is being done, and when the rain comes down. When the rain is coming down, it's the time when the dua is accepted. So the believer benefits from that opportunity. If the rain is too much and the person fears that it might cause harm now, it might f flood, or the person they fear that it may cause problems, then they say, Allahumma hawalayna 
ولا علينا اللهم على الأكائب على الك على الأكائب على الآكام سوري والجبال والآجام والضراب والأودية وملابس الشجر أو الله around us and not on us اللهم حوالينا أو الله take the rain away from us not on top of us around us أو الله take it to the valleys and the pots uh, the ponds and the sea and the mountain hills take it to those places أخرجه البخاري ومسلم so the person should do that فائدة مهمة I highly recommend it sunnah at this particular time and I think it should be made let the sunnah go forth this one should may, be made it which is what يستحب للمؤمن it is rec- recommended for the believer عند أول النزول المطر when the rain first comes down not when it's gone for a long while but when it first came, it comes down أن يكشف عن شيء من بدنه that he opens part of his body and he lets the rain touch it because the Prophet Sallallahu he said the reason why we do this action is because لِأَنَّهُ حَدِيثُ أَحْدِ بِرَبِّهِ It just recently came from its Lord. Freshly just came from its Lord. Muslim narrated that in his Sahih. The tenth waqfa is the ten waqfa is النَّارُ فِي الشِّتَى Fire in winter. The person should be very cautious as a believer and other than him Believers or non-believers, they, what needs to be very is the issue of fire and be left on at night. And Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, "Inna هذه النار إنما هي عدو لكم." The Prophet said, "This fire is your enemy. فإذا نمتم فأطفئوها عنكم." If you are going to sleep, then switch off the fires. Don't let the gas run. Electricity. Somebody has to make that their what? Their their character and their person that, that they check the fire because it can kill you the prophet said in another narration لا تتركوا النار في بيوتكم do not let the fire on in your houses حين تلامون when you go to sleep people do that because they want to keep the house warm so it's impermissible number وقفة 11 الحادية عشر the 11th point that we're going to stand over is الفرح فرح السلف بالشتاء how the salaf were happy when winter came in Umar ibn al-Khattab said, Ash-shita'u ghanimatul abideen. Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Winter is the ghanima, is the spoils of war of the believer, of the worshippers. And Imam Ahmad narrated this in his zuhd. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Marhaban bishita, welcome winter. Tatanazzalu fihi al-baraka, blessings come down. Wa yatulu fihi al-layl, and the night is lengthened. Lil qiyam for us to pray. There's more night in the in winter, right? Qiyam, qiyam al-layl. Allahu Akbar. We've got a longer night with you. Wa yaqsulu fihi al-naharu lil-siyam, and the daytime is short for us to fast. That's how their mind thought. That's how they their mind thought. Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he said, "Ni'm al-zaman al-mu'mini al-shita." The blessing time of a believer is winter. Laylu Tawilun, its night is long. Yaqumu, he stands all night. Wanaharu Kasirun, and the whole day is short. Yasumu, he spends it fasting. Al Imam Ibn Abi Dunya mentions that in his kitab at Tahajjud wa Qiyam al Layl. And Ibn Abi Hatim in his kitab, so Abi Hatim in his kitab al Zuhd. Walidalika, the Salaf they used to cry on their deathbeds in wishing and missing those days where. They were short in regards to benefiting from the nights of winter and the days of winter. وَلِذَلِكَ <laughs> um, They used to say, لَوْلَا ثَلَاثٌ If it wasn't for three, ضَبَأُ الْهَوَاجِرُ The thirst. وَقِيَامُ لَيْلِ And the praying of night, of winter. وَلَذَاذَةُ And the sweetness of التهجد, the night prayer بكتاب الله reading the book of Allah ما, لي, ما باليت أن أكون يعصوبا I would never have ever wished that I would be from the inhabitants of this world I would never want to be from the people of this dunya the only reason I wanted it is because of those things they used to love it <coughs> the 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 last and final point is a hadith which are weak that are transmitted in this time. 
pertaining to winter. For example, the narration that some people bring, which is Ashita or Rabi' al Mu'min, that Shita is the spring of the believers. Ahmed narrated this in his Musnad, Al Bani weakened it in his Sila, he weakened it in his Jami' al Sagir. Also, the second hadith that people transmit is Aslu kulli da'in al Bardu, the foundation of all illnesses is cold. Uh, Al Imam al Asbahani mentioned this in his Kitab al Tibbul Nabawi, Al Bani weakened it in his Sila hadith al Sahiha, and he said, Wa huwa hadith al Da'if al Jidda, it's excessively weak narration. The third narration that people t- t- tend to mention is in al malaika la tafrahu that the angels are happy bidihabi shita'i when winter goes lima yakulu ala al fuqara'i min al shiddati wal bala'i because of the harm that comes to the poor and the pain that they go through tabarani tabarani narrated this in his mu'jam al kabir al bani wikin this in sahih hadith al sahiha and he said munkar the fourth one is ittaqul barda fear the bard be conscious of it fa inna qatala akhakum abad darda because it killed your brother Abu Darda. And this doesn't make sense because the Prophet what? Was alive. Abu Darda died after the Prophet. So this hadith is what? Sakhawi mentioned in his Maqasid al Hasara. It's weak. Number five is Bani Adam Talinu fi Shita. That the hearts of the children of Adam come closer in winter. And that's because Allah created Adam from Teen. What Teenu Yalinu fi Shita. Sorry, what did I say? The children, the, sorry, the hearts of the children of Adam, it softens, sorry. It softens in winter. And that is because Adam was created from teen, and the teen becomes soft in winter, because it gets wet and everything. That, inshallah ta'ala, was all I could bring forth, inshallah ta'ala. I ask Allah, I ask Allah Azza wa Jalla, that on the ending of all of this, that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala an yashrah qulubana lil iman wa an yasta'mal an yasta'milana fi ta'atihi wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin